The death of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II is a time of profound sorrow for the British Armed Forces, as it is for people everywhere. But it is also a moment to express our admiration and gratitude for an exemplary life of service. The last 70 years have witnessed astonishing technological and social changes, and few institutions have experienced this more than the armed forces. At home, we've enjoyed seven relatively peaceful decades, and yet there were only a small number of years when a British serviceman or woman was not lost on operations. Throughout this time, Her Majesty's commitment to the armed forces never wavered. As a figurehead, the Queen was a constant in all our lives, a source of reassurance in times of uncertainty and a unifying force at the heart of national life. But for all the pageantry and tradition, Her Majesty's relationship with the armed forces was deeply personal. The Queen was the daughter, wife, and mother of naval officers. Her grandchildren served with the British Army and the Royal Air Force. Her family's record of wartime service stretches from Jutland to Afghanistan, and she too served in uniform during the Second World War. The Queen was one of our last links to that extraordinary wartime generation. She understood better than most the burdens and the glory of a life of service and the sacrifices the nation asks of men and women in uniform and their families. There were moments of solemn duty, none more so than each November at the Cenotaph, when Her Majesty led the nation in remembrance. But there were moments of great warmth and informality too. It was often said that the Queen's happiest days were with the Duke of Edinburgh in Malta in the late 1940s, living among the naval families. Her Majesty enjoyed the company of her armed forces. There was an instant rapport and a mutual respect often accompanied by a flash of gentle humor. On the global stage, the Queen was the most magnificent ambassador for our country and for the universal values of respect, tolerance, and generosity. Her historic visits to Germany and Japan and to the Republic of Ireland helped to heal the wounds of conflict Her Majesty brought together the very different nations of the Commonwealth in a spirit of fellowship. She was admired by our allies, revered by our adversaries, and Her Majesty inspired the loyalty of all who served in her name. His Majesty's forces are now readying for their most solemn duty. It is our privilege to lead the nation in commemorating the life of a much-loved sovereign. We will do so with the military precision and bearing that is to be expected. But in the stillness and the silence, we will bow our heads and remember the Queen's own vow of her service on the occasion of her 21st birthday. A promise fulfilled with unwavering faith, a high courage, and a quiet heart. Duty, loyalty, commitment, and above all else, service to the nation. This is the legacy of an extraordinary life, and let it continue to be the inspiration for the British Armed Forces for generations to come. God save the king.